Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about the bombings happened in Pakistan two days ago. The suicide bombings targeted mosques two days ago. 57 people dead. Well, minimum. Minimum 57 people dead because the officials say the toll will likely to rise. The two bombings killed 57 people. This is not a sectarian war. I do believe this is from the same sect. This is not Sunni killing Ahmadis or Shia or Shia killing Sunnis. No. This is Sunnis killing Sunnis. In Christianity, if this happened, this will be crazy. The headline will be crazy. Two Christians bombing, bombing a church, you know, that would be crazy. Because this is not a sectarian war. Why this happened? Because one group celebrating the birthday of Prophet Muhammad and the other group who did the bombings are against it. Can you imagine if, if Jehovah's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists who do not celebrate Christmas start bombing the churches that celebrate Christmas? Can you imagine the headline? That will be unthinkable, you know, like crazy. Right? But in Islam, it is not crazy. It is normal. Let us take a look at Surah at tawbah verse 107 to 108. Let us take a look and let us read. There are also those hypocrites who set up a mosque only to cause harm, promote disbelief, divide the believers, and abase for those who had previously fought against Allah and His Messenger. They definitely swear we intended nothing but good, but Allah bears witness. That they are surely liars. Do not, O Prophet, ever pray in it. Certainly, a mosque founded on righteousness from the first day is more worthy of your prayers. In it are men who love to be purified, and Allah loves those who purify themselves. Now, if you just read it like this, you might get confused. You do not get the understanding what the verse is talking about. But then, if you have internet, please take a look. Please dig deeper. Internet is not just to watch cats videos, but we can do some other things, you know, like this, for example. This is a uh, live in Saudi Arabia .net. Let us take a look. Masjid Al Dira was built by Abu Amir and other hypocrites in close proximity to Masjid Kuba. So Masjid Dira and Kuba are in Medina. These hypocrites were not loyal to Islam and did not build the mosque for worship purposes. Rather, they built it to be used against Muslims. Abu Amir is actually known as a Hanif. Abu Amir is a Hanif. And if you do not know what a Hanif is, Hanif is a righteous man who do not follow any religion. So, he's not a Jew, he's not a Christian, he's not a Muslim. But, he believes in one God, he prays, but maybe not the same way like the Muslims, but they pray. They do good. They're good people. So now, this website doesn't say who Abu ha Amir is. It's just, so when you read it, it looks like he's a hypocrite too. And when you go to different website 
about Islam.net says a masjid Adira was a mosque built in Madinah by a monk named Abu Amir and some hypocrites. Wait. This is like almost you know, different compared to the other one. A monk, so it means Abu Amir is a Christian. And some hypocrites. Hmm. Why would a monk build a mosque? Why not a church? Why not a monastery? But then again, this is Islam. So let us forget about common sense for a while. Let's keep reading. After it was built, Abu Amir invited the Prophet to pray in it. So, okay, let's go back a little bit. It was built close to Masjid Kuba with intention of mischief and plots to disuniting the Muslims. After it was built, Abu Amir invited the Prophet to pray in it hmm. with the intention of mischief, but he invited the Prophet to pray in it. Ah, all right. The Prophet accepted the invitation and promised to pray in it after his back from the journey. When the Prophet returned from his journey, Allah exposed the hypocrites, plots, and informed the Prophet about their hypocrisy and ill intentions. So he prevented, prevented him from praying in it. Thus, the Prophet ordered the companions to burn it down. Wow! From accepted the invitation, yeah, I'm going to pray in it to burn it down to the ground very strange so these two websites are very strange but yet they portray the mosque as uh, like evil mosque you know but here in this this Hypocrites were not loyal to Islam. What do you mean not loyal to Islam? And were they Muslims but not loyal to Islam? That sounds like they are Muslims but they are not loyal to Islam. Because if they are Christians, why would they should be should be should they be loyal to Islam? If they are Christians, they should be loyal to Christianity, right? Not to Islam. When you read something like this, these hypocrites were not loyal to Islam, it sounds like they're Muslims. But here, it's built by a monk named Abu Ham Amir and some hypocrites. Okay. But actually, if you get confused of all the two different things about Islam on the internet, you can always try to look uh the archive you know like you can read tabari or anything most of them are in on the internet for example history of tabari also on the internet archive.org so now when we go to page 61 well as when you see 77 here, but actually it's 61. Oh, 60, sorry. Page 60. Let us read from here. Then the messenger of God proceeded until he halted in Duawan, a town, an hour daytime journey from Medina. The people who had built the mosque of descent had come to him while he was preparing for Tabuk. Saying, O Messenger of God, we have built a mosque for the sick and needy and for raining and cold nights. We would like you to visit us and pray for us in it. So according to historian, according to Atabari, the mosque was built for the sick and the needy for rainy and cold nights. 
and they invited Prophet Muhammad to pray for them. If anything, these people sound like they're humble. Even though they, well, actually, what I, maybe I, I didn't mention earlier, Prophet Muhammad invited them to become Muslim, to Islam, but they refused. They refused. I forgot to tell you about that. But they still ask Prophet Muhammad to pray for them, to come to the mosque. Now, let's, let us continue. The Prophet said he was on the verge of traveling and was preoccupied on word to that effect. And that when he returned, God willing, he would come to them and pray for them in it. When he stopped in Duhawan, news of the mosque came to him. And he summoned Malik bin al Duksum, a brother of Banu Salim bin Auf, and Man bin Adi, or his brother Asim bin Adi, brothers of Banu al Ajlan, and said, Go to this mosque whose owners are unjust people and destroy and burn it. And they went out briskly until they came to Banu Salim bin Auf, who were Malik been our Duxum clan. Malik said to man, wait for me until I bring fire from my people. He went to his kinsfolk and took a palm branch and lighted. Then both of them ran until they entered the mosque with people inside, set, it, set fire to it and destroyed it, and the people dispersed. Now, when you read Atabari, you read something different. Those people are not evil. They built the mosque for travelers in case if they need a place to stay when it's cold and rainy, they can stay. Or for the sick and needy, they can stay in it. And yes, when a mosque becoming like that, the mosque is not for becoming a mosque for worship. But this is a different function of mosque. And Muhammad hated it. And what I don't understand is why At-Tabari did not mention anything about the news Muhammad heard. What was the news? This one is, I don't know why. It doesn't say anything. See, here, when he stopped in Duawan, news of, of the mosque came to him. That's it. What was the news? Nobody knows. What was the reason? The real reason he burned down the mosque? Nobody knows. So now, anyway, I just showed you that burning a mosque by Muslims are normal. It is normal for a Muslim to burn a mosque. In modern day, they use bombs. It is sad. However, again, in Islam, it is normal. Because Islam does not teach peace but rather than just to follow anger and just react right away. If anything, Islam is teaching intolerant as well. Islam teaching hates against the Jews, the Christians, the pagans, against dogs, against uh, house lizards. A mouse, a snake, against women, children, slaves, everything. 
But yet, they always play the victim. But if you are a Christian and you, you are listening to this, you must not play the victim card. Because in Jesus, you are a victor, not a victim. Anyway, that's all from me for tonight. Thank you for listening and watching. For those who celebrate the, the birthday of Prophet Muhammad, God bless you. For those who are against it, God bless you. Have a nice life.